Hello. <clears throat> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Derek Main. <clears throat> Sometimes I wonder if I should go back to having a name because like for a channel because it's kind of weird to be like hi welcome back to Derek main i'm Derek main Derek main Derek main Derek main uh especially for someone who already feels slightly awkward and uncomfortable about using my government name with everything just because in life you have to be a lot of different things you know to different people and as i've explored a more creative aspect um, publicly and as I've shared and entered that arena so to speak it is uh, it's always kind of in, in the back of your head like you know I hope that I I hope that the, the the creative plane does not inhibit or hurt or harm sort of the, the physical plane <laughs> that makes sense this could be a long video today because I kind of feel like talking, but hopefully you'll, you know, grab a coffee, grab a tea, a cocktail if, if you're into it, and, and maybe just put this on and, and listen to me ramble for a bit. The primary thing I'm going to do today, I think, is talk about Renata Adler's Pitch Dark. Uh, I did a review on Speedboat a while back that was, uh, I loved that book. It's one, it's it's fantastic. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about this, but I did want to start off just, you know, like a little more casual, I guess, talk about my reading funk. I've been in a serious reading funk, um, which is really odd, you know, like when the world first shut down last March, 2020, you know, I was one of, I mean, I had friends and other uh, booktubers and folks on Twitter that I follow, you know, that are expressed having trouble reading, you know, like that, you know, the shock and the, the suddenness of, of our lives so drastically changing was like really putting a wrench in it. And for me, it's where I found solace. I read more. Um, and I think I read 80 or 90 books last year, which is a that's a lot, you know, and, and I'm someone who likes to do a close to you know, deep read. And it was because that's really where I found a lot of my escape it and, and, uh, that's where I traveled. That's where I connected to new and different ideas. And that, um, truthfully is kind of how I maintain my sanity. Um, I think was just going deeper into it and not coincidentally, I have been having, uh, a bit of a writing funk lately as well. I'm not really able to squeeze out much more or I'm not able to really sustain a voice for much longer than 500 to 600 words. So I've just, I've written a couple of like small pieces that I'm pleased with, but for the most part, feel like I'm kind of, you know, waiting on my board, waiting for that next wave to come, you know, and uh, haven't even necessarily stood up and, and gotten in position yet. And I think the two things are connected, right? Like, I think that the reading slump and the writing slump are connected. At the times that I am my most successful as a writer, I am usually reading very well. And I know there's, a, there's, there's plenty of, of writers who that's not the case for them. They, they, and I, I completely understand that. I don't, I'm not one of these writers or it's even weird to say that. I'm not, I'm not one of these people who tries to write, who says that you have to be a reader first and foremost. That's not my qualification. I think that writing is an art form and there's so many ways to go about it and be successful. But for me, I am a reader and I am someone who writes to add to a tradition and, uh, I, when I'm writing, I am trying to have a conversation with writers living and dead and unborn. Um, and that's just the thing I like. That's just like the dorky whatever. Well, something, something's happened, like, you know, and, 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 and the reading has fallen off. And a lot of times when that happens, I'll have a lot of books at once that I'm kind of working through, right? Um, so I want to talk about a couple of those. 
And I am reading right now one, two, three, four, five, six books, which is insane. Like that's not like healthy or the good way to do it. Um, but well, let's start with, I guess the most serious read I'm doing is a reread of Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. And I am going to do a video on this. I just haven't decided if I need to look into the readings, like if Walt Whitman's stuff is copyright protected or something, am I allowed to just like read stuff I like? I mean, I know I can like read excerpts, but can I just, I'm not saying I want to read Leaves of Grass, but like, I'm also not saying I don't want to read Leaves of, okay. So, uh, I'm going to talk more about this. This has been the thing I've been most, um, immersed in and as far as like, uh, I have different moods throughout the day, so I read at different times, and this has been my, like, evening, almost religious read. And it is and it is a religious text. We'll talk about that. So, so that's the one thing that's, like, super exciting, I think, feel like I'm reading now. I mean, I like everything I'm reading now. I'm just saying that's, like, it's hard, like, because I'm having trouble reading. This is, I wish, oh, here it is. This is Cowboy Graves. I, I take the thing off. Uh, by Bolaño, three new novellas. Roberto Bolaño, um, you know, is one of my favorite writers. I think that's the case for a lot of people around my age. And uh, it's okay so far. Uh, it's a process book. Like a lot of his, I doubt I'll do a review of it, so I don't mind talking briefly. A lot of his like found novellas and found works are are really sketches that ended up becoming Savage Detectives or 2666. And that's definitely what Cowboy Graves is. So I'm interested in it very much so from a uh, writer perspective and sort of seeing how those uh, pieces started and then what they end up becoming. I think that's really good. In fact, I... I am toying with a reread of 2666 after this, um, only because it's about time for one. It is my favorite novel of this century um, and one of my favorite novels ever. I mean, you know, it, it, when people ask you what's your top three, your top five, you know, mine changes all the time, you know, depending on my mood. But I would say I think 2666 for the last couple of years maybe three, four years has been consistently, it's always going to be in that the ones I'm naming. So uh, this is kind of in parts like reading a draft of that, although more so Savage Detectives, frankly. Expat 4, this is, this thing is amazing. Um, so you see the back here, there's all the writers and I think Expat does, I mean, it's no secret. I think they do the most interesting stuff with literature uh, right now in the English language. Um, and I think it's appropriate to call me a fanboy of them, and I am comfortable with it. Uh, Bible's story is tremendous context creator. You know that I did a review of Better Face of Fascism, and I am still kind of back and forth in my head about writing something longer or whatever about the oeuvre, because I really like that writer. Um, Corey Bennett, who is um, just, I think has one of the most unique voices going right now and his perspective is 100% his own. Um, his story in here is very, very good. Uh, and I think I've read about half. I kind of like dip in and out. There was one other one that I wanted to mention that I thought, I thought, oh, S.G. Phillips, Sam Phillips. S.G. Phillips' story is is tre tremendous. I, 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 um, I think that dude has like, I, he hasn't written a book yet, so it's all been stories. Um, I think he's going to write like an, insane book at some point i mean his 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 voice is really really good and then the uh, last one i want to mention is jane judith um, because jane judith is uh, an, a, another just singular voice and the stuff that she does with form and and vocabulary and language is so interesting so good i really like hers and I, like i said about halfway through x-pad 4 i've been reading that that's like a pickup um 
God, it's like 10 minutes in. I don't know if I really want to, like, should I actually do a 30 minute, you know, video titled like my reading slump and random thoughts on Renata Adler's pitch dark. I don't know. Is that, does the world need that? That's what the world's getting. x Five Four has been my on-the-go read. That's something I kind of pick up uh, along with one other one. I'll, I'll be to in a second, um, and and just kind of haul wherever it is that I'm going. You know, read a quick story, which is nice. Um, just finished the first section of this, so I'm only 20 pages in, but we have Julian Grax, the oppose uh, the opposing shore, and this is translated. Can we get a translator? I mean, it is translated, right? Yes, translated from the French by Richard Howard. And this is a grab, this is a recommendation for one of my favorite favorite readers. I'm gonna screw up his name so bad, but it looks like Jamal, but he, he's, he, he, I, I just mess up the name, but he's one of my favorite readers he's, and, and one of my favorite people to talk to about, about literature. I think we're both a little literature sick in that um, same vein of, of Enrique Villamontes. Well, anyway, uh, this is cool. It, it reminds me a little bit of The Long Ships so far, a book I reviewed and read last year, maybe two years ago. No, last year. Um, you know, it's got that historical eth epic feel. Um, but so far, at least in the first chapter, what I liked was a little bit of the political philosophy in it because, you know, this is, it, it's about the great maritime state of Orsena, <laughs> long been lulled by settled peace and prosperity. And then this, our epic hero goes... Sort of like to the far reaches. Um, he's got like a post in the far reaches that he's going to um, be at as part of his like voluntary military service. And he has a powerful father, but he seems sort of, he wants to like hang with poets and like drink the day away. Sort of like, he's like very much like more hedonistic. Doesn't seem to have that, you know, patriotic whatever verve. Um, so of course I, he's, I love him. <laughs> but uh, he is being sent here and they are at war with the other, the savage lands of Fargaston, a slumbering but by no means extinct volcano. Um, so, yeah, we'll see where it goes. It's good so far, but it's a very, like, traditional narrative, which it's just been a while since I read one. Um, but I, when Jamal, Jam, I'm going to mess up his word so bad, but when he recommends a book, I listen the other one I've been carrying with me, uh, like Expat 4, and actually this author's in Expat 4, is Nudes by L. Nash. This is from SF slash LD Books, Hobart's um, collection. You see this crazy back cover. She's holding an AK. Um, and in the front, we got a handgun. Nudes is great. This is, uh, I have read, so most of these stories, these are all stories. They've mostly appeared... I mean, they appeared really great, like New York Tyrant, right? Hobart, Paul, um, Adroit, Harsh, uh, Ganerica, I think for the cats, uh, Cat Story, Joyland. Big, big places. And um, I am a big fan of Elle's work. And this one's a great one. You just kind of like pick up and what mood am I in? And all of a sudden you're going to, um, I mean, you're with a master, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to, to craft. I mean, you really are like, you know, in the hands of, of someone who is going to uh, masterfully take you on on a journey um, through the physical, but um, via consciousness, it says something really interesting there. I think where it's 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 very on. She talks about on the body, and it is very on the body. It is very physical, but. Um, filtered through sort of our um, consciousness lens. And of course, it, it's writing, right? So that may seem obvious, but there is a way in which, and you can see like when I'm doing these, how poorly like prepared and ready I am. This is probably like a good way to understand how dumb I am in actuality and how long it takes me to just like make a video. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to say something about the way that she blends those worlds, um, that subconscious even world with the body. There's something there, and I got to keep reading and get to and get to it and figure out what it is because that's one of my favorite. I'll say that one of my favorite parts of reading, and maybe just making this video will like knock some sense back into me. But 
when you're reading something and you can tell there's something happening here. It's interesting to me. It's either scary to me or it's unique to me or it's novel. It's, uh, you know, beautiful, whatever the thing is. And, but you haven't pinpointed it yet. And it's like, that kind of makes it fun to, you know, go through and keep reading, like figure it out. And then I'm working through another read of William Gass's The Tunnel. I am not far into here. I have passed the intro at least, but um, this is one of those books you can read for, for a lifetime. So that is a peek into a weird world, right? So I have Vertigo. It's kind of embarrassing because I'm not going to edit, as you know. Uh, I have vertigo, and so, like, as I looked up here to talk, it just, like, hits me, and then I, so sometimes that happens, like, when my kids are around stuff, and they're like, what's wrong with dad? And then one day it might kill me. Um, anyway, the tunnel's great, I mean, but it's just, like, maybe that's part of my reading tr trouble, like, right now, is that it's so dense, and the references, and it's just... I don't know. I need to read this maybe with somebody um, or maybe I need to not tackle something so daunting right now. I'd say that's the one of the stack I'm reading that is just, it's the hardest for me to like pick up. I've got to really feel like I've got an hour, you know, to spend with it and also accept that in that hour, I may only make, um, you know, 15 pages worth of progress. <laughs> maybe less. Okay. So, Pitch Dark, Renata Adler. I just looked at the time, 16 minutes. I'm just going to go through with it. What am I going to do, two videos? Like, that doesn't seem, no. Um, so, yeah, I loved Speedboat, as you know. I love her, or as I talked about my past review. If you haven't seen that review, I mean, you know, I think you should, yeah. I mean, obviously, I, I did it. But, uh, yeah, so what I loved so much about Speedboat was not just her turn of phrase, not just her completely novel and unique way to tell any story you know just her voice I mean let's just break it down like that the voice you know and I think voice uh, is that's my I, I think that's my probably weakness isn't the word I want to use but I am I, I can be drawn I love voice and I and if something has a, I think it's because I have such an inconsistent voice I never know how to be or what to be, not just in writing, but just in general. Like, how am I supposed to act now, you know? And I don't know. Um, and so I am always really enthralled by something that keeps such a consistent and confident voice. And so, well, and that's what Speedboat does. And Pitch Park does this as well. Uh, Pitch Dark has a little more of a framed plot device. Um, the narrator is Kate Ennis, and she's um, just kind of in the middle of an affair with a married man and, and going through a couple of different episodes that are broken up kind of like short stories, but it is a, it is a novel. Um, but they're broken up. You know, they have like their own titles and stuff. And... It, using that device to sort of get at something because she's at this like inflection point in in the affair okay so a little more you know of a of a framed plot device than speedboat but similar i mean it doesn't matter too much like what it, it really is still a vehicle for adler's in, in, insanely good philosophical social, political, but not uh, socio-political, I'll use that word, uh, and, and philosophical musings and, and rantings. And and it's not quite as funny as Speedboat. So that's one thing that I think missed me a little bit. And it's not quite as sharp. It, the last thing I'll say when I as I compare the two things is is that Speedboat was very external to the world. So the character, the news gossip columnist or whatever narrator was reacting to the world in a very funny and like seething and scathing and smart way. Pitch Dark 
because it is a woman sort of looking at her life through the lens of this affair is a much more internal looking book. Um, and I just think Adler is better at the external. Um, that said, I am going to read some from the first section, Orcas Island. Orcas Island is tremendous and it's up there in quality with, with Speedbook, this one section. I think it falls off after. Uh, there's good stuff I mean, the Irish. There's a great scene. That I think Pitch Dark is actually the, the titular the, the section where she's driving on these Irish roads at night and lost. And there's some good uh, metaphorical stuff there, some good um, almost allegory. Uh, and and that stuff's, that stuff's good. But the first one, Orcas Island, is, is the one that was pretty special. And Orcas Island has uh, – it's doing something in, in writing that I – I like to do sometimes, which is almost sample other works. Um, in this case, it's uh, Wittgenstein. There's there's probably some other, uh, or there's 100% some other references I'm not getting. Not, not probably. Um, that's my favorite, that's my favorite style. I mean, we started all this off kind of talking about my trouble with reading lately and how connected it is to my writing. And um, I think some of my favorite writing does that. The Wasteland does that, right? Like, I mean, that... It, it, it's a poem of references and and then takes it and and, and takes these these classical references and it, you can love and appreciate the work without them but with them suffuses them with even more meaning and that's sort of as I was talking about the way I like to write and the way I like to read like in that way it is sort of adding to this tradition of trying to understand ourselves and each other and and the world writ large through text um, and failing to do so i think that's important i think that any any book um whether it's fiction or nonfiction, actually i mean in philosophy it should it should strive to and ultimately fail at whatever um it wants to, whatever it hopes to illuminate. So the Wittgenstein reference is, it's just right here. That's why I'm doing this weird thing where I completely move, but it's from Philosophical Investigations, which uh, this version right here is translated by G E M Enscombe, P M S Hacker, and Joachim Schilt, and this one has the German right. Um, so you see, the German will be on one side, and then the English, because it's a text about language. I think that's really, really, really cool. Um, I have four sections here that I have highlighted through this read. So whenever I, a lot of times I'll, I'll take them out because I don't want to be, I'll take the flags out because I don't want to be in, in uh, influenced by a previous read. I want to see something fresh and rely on, on memory and not me marking and saying, hey, pay attention to this. Um, but I have not picked this up in a while. And only about a third... Uh, yeah, about a third of the way through. Um, and anyway, the first line of, of this is in the first one, everything that is the case. Um, well, I thought it was the first line. I guess it's not. But it is definitely, maybe it's in the preface. Nope. Okay. All right, well, at some point he says this, and I, I mean, again, like, I guess this is like the wrong way for me to do this um, when it comes to, when it comes to making these reviews or else I can be a little more prepared. But the, the thing that she's playing on is the world is everything that is the case, that phrase um, of Wittgenstein's. So, that is some of the sampling that she's doing and then 
putting this sort of different and new spin on it, or more likely since it's philosophy, applying it to her life and situation. So I'm going to read maybe five little sections here that I flagged. Um, this is page 21. I'm going to read a bit of this. And the rest of this review, we are at 25 minutes. I'm saying that to myself so that maybe I can remember to put in the thing. The rest of this is going to be, I, I think, me reading it. I don't think I'm going to have much comment on it, but it will give you a good sense of what the deal is with this book. This is, um, yeah, page 20 into 21. I'll read this whole little section. It's really good. We have the sins of silence here. Also the sins of loquacity and glibness. We have the sins of moderation and also of excess. We have our sinner gluttons and our sinner anoretics. We have the sins of going first and of after you, Alfonso. We have the sins of impatience and of patience, of doing nothing and of taking action, of spontaneity and calculation, of indecision and of sitting in judgment on one's peers. We try to be alert here for infractions and when we find none, we know we have fallen among the sins of oversight or else of smugness. We have the sins of disobedience and of just following orders, of gravity and levity, of complacency, anxiety, indifference, obsession, interest. We have the sins of insincerity and of telling unwelcome truths. We have the sins of ingratitude for our many blessings and of taking joy in any moment of our lives. We have the skins of skepticism and belief, of promptness and of being late, of hopelessness and of expecting anything, of failing to think of the starving children in India, of dwelling on thoughts about those children, of failing to see the relevance of another spoonful to the situation of those starving children, or to Uncle Bill or Granny or poor Joel or whomever we're being asked to take another spoonful for. We have the sins of depression and of being comforted, of ignorance and being well informed, of carelessness and exactitude, of leading, following, opposing, taking no part in, very few of us, it seems fair to say, are morally at ease. All right, page 22. Look, the sun is a sort of bribe, you know, and so is a heavy thunderstorm or a snowfall. So is a dawn, though not, I think, a sunset. So is a warm bath or a shower and a sound sleep. Bribes all in the conspiracy of everything to continue to exist. You've left out the B minor mass, Mozart, all kinds of music, also pleasure in high speeds, the deeply comic, something to eat or drink, success in an empire. Well, all of them have their ingredient of death, you know. And you've left out love. So I have. So I have. I really, really like that section. The language of that's great. Uh, page 29. The world is everything that is the case. And in the second place, because... In the sixth year, I went to New Orleans by myself. Look, I can't. The relation between storytelling and eroticism is always close. I mean, it's just a matter of spinning yarns. Yes, it is. Spinning yarns. Not anymore, I think. Not even in thrillers, which is the path the purest storytelling and pulse took. Not even in thrillers. Where stories are, there is always sex and sometimes mortal danger. Pretty good. All right got two more. This one is page 32. This is one that starts again. This section, these are all like broken up in, in the paragraph things. Note uh, Joyce Carolowitz's wan little husks. Um, but uh, this was another one that starts off with the, the vacant side. The world is everything that is the case. Um, and then he goes down below. Who could argue that the world includes things that are not the case? That some things that are not the case at all are hidden somewhere in the world. Only a specious poet or a trendy French philosopher toying with metaphor unworthy of the statement's august truth. And yet, after the first flash of awe and admiration, the loss is inescapable. I mean, who wants to write specious half-truths? On the other hand, who wants to write cement? That's good. Um... And then this is another thing that she, these are some of the things that she repeats and I just really like the language. So page 35, one 36 is pretty short. You are, you know, you were the nearest thing to a real story to happen in my life. Yet here I am for the first time and yet again, alone at last on Orcas Island. Did I throw the most important thing perhaps by accident away? I screwed that up there, but 
did I throw the most important thing, perhaps, by accident away? Um, that was really good. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll snap out of it. Maybe this will help. Maybe it won't. You need times of action and times of inaction. You need times of rest, times of unrest. I guess I'm in one of those times of rest, at least when it comes to whatever we can make of this literary life. I hope everyone's doing well. Be good, folks.